plaintiffs, Ann Hall, and her daughter, Angel, say Angel goes to school with the defendant, and Angel agreed to sell her a cell phone. However, Angel claims after her phone was stolen while in the defendant's possession, the defendant refused to pay for it. So they're suing. Defendants Regina Carnes and Marissa Palos say after Marissa took possession of the phone, a group of Angel's friends threatened to jump her if she didn't turn over the phone. So she did because she was afraid. Regina and Marissa are countersuing for harassment. Start with you all. We're here today for my daughter Angel. Angel is a uh, just started high school. It's her first year, and uh, Marissa is uh, one of her. Classmates or schoolmates? Yes. Mm -hmm. And uh, Marissa and her mother is causing problems for my child. And uh, I want to let Angel tell, tell me you about, about it. it, young lady. Hi. Me and Marissa were mostly, we started out cool. We had two classes together. We talked about everything. And. Okay. Tell me what problems you've had. The problems I had was basically keeping it between me and her with the whole situation. Make it, she kept making it public, and I kept asking her to keep it between what me and What situation? Her. Situation with the missing cell phone. Okay, so everything is revolving around that. Yeah. All right, you all want to give me some background before we get to the specifics? Yes, Your Honor. Marissa nor Angel are, are innocent in the whole situation. Neither one of them are angels. However... Marissa she is, started aren't you being, Angel? <laughs> <laughs> well, her middle name is Angel. Yes. So. Oh, okay. <laughs> but... Angel started threatening Marissa, and Angel had a group of friends about that were what? threatening Marissa. About what? About the phone. Okay, let's get right into the phone. Since uh, that's the only background we're going to exchange is that you all were schoolmates mm -hmm. and friends. You tell me about the phone. In September, her grades were so good, I went on eBay and I bid it for Sidekick 09. I paid $119 for it in September. And I gave it to her. I left and went out of town. She called me and asked me, could she sell the phone? I told her, yes, yeah, since you earned it, it's yours. You can do what you want, but I won't be buying another phone. When I got back in town, her and her father were stressed out. They didn't want to tell me about the phone. She said that a girl had took the phone and not paid for it. Sure you had the phone cut off, right? The we service. never had it turned on. Gotcha. Mm -hmm. It was fresh out of the box. Gotcha. And so I walked into the counselor's office, and Marissa and her mother was in there, and Angel had her head down. She just pointed to him. So I walked over to her, and I asked, are you her mother? Were you aware that they was trying to sell a cell phone? She said, yes. I said, well, do you have the phone? She said, no. I said, do you intend to pay for the phone? She said, no. I said, why? She said, because your daughter threatened my daughter. I said, well, I'm her mother, and uh, I paid for the phone, so you need to talk to me. And then she started talking to my daughter and going toward her. I said, wait a minute, we two adults. She talked to me. The cell phone is on my credit card. Mm -hmm. And so the principal walked in, and he said, well, call the school officer and file a, pol a police report since she's admitting to having the phone, and she's not going to pay you for it. Who's admitting? That's what, are you Marissa suggesting Karen, that the mother, the mother? You're saying that the mother admitted. The mother admitted that, still that with she that saw first. the phone, and she sent for the phone, but they're she's still not with that. paying for it. No, my daughter was bringing the phone home to me to asked me if she could purchase it from Angel okay. because she's not allowed to buy anything right. without me seeing it. All right. That day in school, in, in her class, it was taken from her. It was stolen. Oh, okay. That's your defense. Yes. It was stolen by Angel's friends and what Marissa thought was a mutual friend of theirs. Okay. Go ahead, young lady. Well, I never threatened Marissa. I came to her with Let's so Let's talk about what happened to your respect. phone. She told me in these exact words that her mom wanted to see the phone before she bought it, and I respect that because she didn't, you know, you don't want to buy something you haven't seen. So I said, okay. And she said, well, can I? She wants to put the chip in the phone to see how it works and play with it during fourth period because we have fifth period together, so it was only 30 minutes apart. So I said, okay, I'll see you in fifth period. And between fourth and fifth period is lunch. So somebody comes up to me and tells me, oh, it's gone, it's missing. Somebody took it. Then what did you do? So I was like, okay, well, I'm just going to see what Marissa says in fifth period anyway. Mm -hmm. so what did she say? She was like, yeah, it's true. The phone's missing, and I'll pay you back for it. Okay. And I was like, okay. And did you I was all like, ever determine what happened? She just said something about one of my friends took it to the bathroom and, like, probably took it. Or somebody, somebody else probably took it. I don't one know. of your friends took it from where? How did she get it from her? 
She let her use it. Okay. And this friend that she let use it allegedly took it into the bathroom and someone stole it from there. Or that's it, the story yeah, you got? Yeah, disappeared. Yeah, that's what she told me. Yeah. All right. But you'd say she did agree to pay you for it. Yes. All right. Young lady, why don't you tell me the, okay. your side? Well, I got the phone on October 14th in third period. She was saying she had a phone, so I was like, oh, can I see it? And like she said, I asked her if I could tell my mom. She said, yeah. So... In fifth period that day, it got stolen out of my bag. And I told From her. From where? My bag. It was like in the table behind me. In your classroom? Yeah. All right. It was sitting on a table. Yeah. In open view. N the bag was closed. It was zipped no, up. No, but the bag could be seen by everyone. Yeah. All right. And then what? And I told Angel that's what happened. And she said, okay. So the next day, she talked to the whole group of friends, and she said, if my phone doesn't come up in the office, I'm going to go to the police. So it, ma it like just appeared in the office, and she got called out, and she handed me back the phone. And then that was third period when she handed me back the phone the next day. So she recovered the phone and then gave it back yeah. to you again. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We went out to lunch, and um, a group of her friends came up to me saying, why did I tell Angel that... They had took the phone when it wasn't true. Now, I don't want to hear any more hearsay. What happened with the phone from there? She in, gave it back to Kay's you. Class. Please don't whisper to her. Okay. Because you make me think you're encouraging her to say something that isn't a part of her own testimony. And usually when people do that, it's encouraging them to lie. Okay. Or it's reminding them of the lie that they were supposed to tell in court. <laughs> All right. So... What happened to the phone after she gave it to you a second time? Um, I took it into class. A group of girls, like I was telling you, mm -hmm. came up to me saying that they were going to fight me. They, they were going to jump me for the phone because they wanted it. Mm -hmm. So uh, a girl that I thought was my friend as well as Angel's friend said, I'll hold it for you, you know, so nothing would happen to it. They wouldn't do nothing to me. Mm -hmm. I was like, okay. I was scared. I was like, I don't want to get jumped. Mm -hmm. So I handed her the phone. She went to the restroom. And Did you file a report with the school that you have been threatened? Um, my mom made an, inter an incident report at the school. And did it say that the phone had been stolen from you? No. What did you tell them then? It, the, what the incident report says, it's that I got threatened. That's mainly what happened. It doesn't say the phone was the reason why, but it says I got threatened. Okay, it doesn't say anything about the phone. No. The incident report. Right. You have anything about the phone? I got a message on Facebook from a person um, that was my friend as well as the girl that took the phone to the bathroom and she told me exactly what happened and she told me that they wanted her to help but she did it. Okay. Do you have evidence to show that? Yes, I do. A Facebook message? Saying that? Um, it says exactly what happened. Okay. Let's see it. And it says just what same thing you told me. Mm -hmm. But... I'll read this, but you were negligent. You were negligent. So you set her phone on the top of the table and obviously left it or stopped looking at it and taking care of it properly. You were negligent then. Then a second time, yes. you give the phone to someone by your own admission. What harassment, young lady, you're counseling for harassment. How has she harassed you? Um, I got text messages saying that if I didn't pay for the phone, that my life was at risk. Let's see them. No. I you have the any evidence? They wouldn't. That was all the way in October. Did you go to the police for this incident? This time, she's threatened to do what? She wasn't the one that said it. It was someone okay. else Okay, your on claim is dismissed. She didn't say it as by your own admission. You can only sue her for things that she did, not what another person did or said. I'll grant your judgment for $370. I'll dismiss your claim because by your own admission, she didn't do it. Somebody else said it. All right, have a good day. Thanks,